Hey, Rob. Right down here to your left. Uh, obviously, a big fight week again. These are you know, nothing new to you at this point, but this one does seem crucial given how the last fight went and stuff. Uh, do you feel like this has kind of got a big bearing on the future from here, this matchup? Uh, probably not as much as you think it does, right? I, every fight to me is do or die. You know, so that's, why, that's the only reason why losing sucks so much, right? So, but we looked at a lot of things uh, in, in the last prep, in the last fight, and the way I felt in the fight, the, the mentality surrounding it, and we made adjustments. And, uh, yeah, they're going to pay dividends on Saturday. Yeah, you've obviously, you know, experienced defeat before and setbacks, and you've always been able to kind of recalibrate. But as you kind of just explained there, you looked into the things. Um, was there stuff that you were maybe overlooking and feeling like, hey, this seemed like it was right until it was proven wrong? Not really. It's... Um, it, it's one of those things where everything in hindsight is twenty twenty. So, we, we there were some things that were suboptimal in the last camp. There were some obstacles that we had to work with and work around. And end of the day, the result is what it was, and it wasn't the result we were after. So, what we did was we adjusted. We we made some changes. We threw ourselves straight back into the gym, and here I am, fight week once again. Yeah, and uh, Paulo's here as well. We saw him a couple hours yeah. ago at this point. Like, is it a little bit of a sigh of relief knowing that he made it in town and it seems like everything is good? I wasn't. I was never worried, to be honest. And but he's here. I'm here. We're fighting. Yeah. And how do you think this plays out? I mean, you've obviously had multiple opportunities to think about it. I don't know if the game plan or the approach has evolved over time. But as you go in here, like, what do you kind of make of him and assess this matchup? I. He's a great fighter. He's been in the conversation of the top ten forever. Like he's a, yeah, he he's he's a good fighter. He's a power puncher. He pushes forward. He likes controlling and dictating the fight through that way. But I don't think he's encountered anyone like me. I don't think anyone has until they come up against me. And mate, I've done everything for. I've ticked every box. I've crossed every T. I've dotted every I in the last few months leading up to this fight. So I'm going into this fight just cocked and ready. Yeah, and obviously it's got a lot of stakes too. I mean, I think a middleweight fight has headlined every card so far this year, and now you guys have the co-main event, a lot of you know important results and stuff. Where do you think this factors into, I guess, the, the overall hierarchy of the middleweight division? The middleweight division's moving. It's moving a lot. There's a lot of fluidity in it, and it's rife with opportunity. You know, winning opens doors. More, more so now than ever. Do you have any theories of why in these past few fights no one's been able to defend that belt? It's been four new champions in the past four middleweight title fights. <laughs> Mate, fighting's hard. And I think, I think, yeah, it depends who shows up on the night. That, honestly, it, it was like that with the, the Sean and Drickus. It was like that with Sean and that Izzy. It's, it just is what it is. Who would be a more important rematch to get back for you at this point? Drickus or Izzy, do you think? Um... Oh, Drickus is a sore spot for me because I didn't turn up. I didn't perform. And, you know, it's important for me to run that back. Do you think it's a good idea for him to make a quick turnaround for UFC 300 like they seemingly want to do with him and maybe Izzy or Hamza? He can do whatever he wants. What do I care? <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe you want him to still be the guy on top when you fight for that belt again. Mate, I'll get to him. It's fine. Perfect. Thanks, Rob over here. If the UFC does go down that route for UFC 300 with, with Drakus and potentially Izzy, how do you see that fight going? Mate, who can say? No one saw Sean beat Izzy, right? So, like, yeah. Could anything, anything could happen. And a big win for you over Paulo Costa would be the perfect start for you in 2024. So, what are your goals to have done by, by the end of this year? I want to beat Costa. That's, that's on the to-do list right now and that's as far as my calendar goes and I know uh, you've mentioned on Embedded and everything that you're a big video game guy so my question to you in regards to this is are there any video games that are unreleased or not released yet that you're looking forward to playing with your family and your kids Dragon's Dogma 2 I am frothing on it and <laughs> mate, it, it comes out in March so that is perfect awesome good little, little post fight treat for you then if, if that happens but um Obviously, Australian MMA has grown exponentially throughout the years. But 
what do you think needs to happen for Australia to kind of shift gears into a higher level in terms of MMA and the continuous growth of the sport out there? Can, can you say where, where, sorry? Like what do you think needs to happen for, for the Australian MMA scene to keep growing more than what yeah. it already is? Mate, have you seen the trajectory of Australian mixed martial arts? Like it, it, is, it is growing at a rate. It's got to be one of the fastest growing countries at the moment for, for, for mixed martial arts. I think it's... It's doing, it's going, you know what I mean? I don't think there's anything that needs to be done because, like, at home, it seems like an MMA gym is popping up on every corner just about, and we're having more and more MMA New Zealand athletes come out of the area. So, mate, whatever we're doing, but keep doing it. You know, fellow Australian, Volkanovski's headlining this card, so how do you see his fight going? Mate, I understand Tapuri's like, he's, he's, he's a demon in the division, you know? He's, he's, yeah, he's a nightmare for a lot of people, but I think it'd be very hard, very hard to bet against Volk. Like, Volk's probably the best featherweight to ever do it. He's yeah, sensational. If anyone's going to, if anyone's going to back up, it's going to be him. Thank you. Rob, Paulo was in here earlier, and he was saying that despite the fact he hasn't fought, he's had like a couple of camps right before the fight fell apart, and so he's improved a lot as a fighter. But do you think you kind of need to have those fights in between camps to be able to put what you've been working on into practice because otherwise if you go in there could you just revert to type if you haven't been using them in live situations 100 percent it's like a sprinter learning how to sprint by reading it's, you can't practice that you, you need to you, you, you need to get in there you need to you need to test the waters you need to see what happens like as much as i hate the way the the fight played out with drickers i learned a lot from it I, I remember the feelings I had in there. So now I know what I need to make sure not to happen again. Was that a unique experience, the Drikas fight? Had you ever experienced something similar to that previously and you sort of felt, oh, I recognize this? Or was it just completely like, oh, shit, I'm not firing when I should be and so on? It, it was different. I'll leave it at that. Okay. It wasn't fun. <laughs> okay. you, uh, you've mentioned a couple of times in the build-up to this that you're trying to bring the beast back and you're going in there to hurt Paulo, not just beat him. How does that look in training? What exactly do you need to do practically to bring the beast out and be more aggressive? I'll also address, I think people are misunderstanding. It's not personal. There's nothing personal. Like, we're in the fight game. Like, I'm trying to hurt him as a means to victory. That's, and, you know, respectfully, I'm sure he's trying to do the same thing. It's just one of those things where I, I, want, I don't want to just win. You know, I want to finish him. I want to get in there and I want to finish him. I want to put all the work that I've spent months doing and grinding it and, and bleeding and sweating for to action and I think that is how I will get satisfaction Is that something you can train specifically aggression? You just train that in the way you hit pads and the way you spar or how do you train yeah, I, think, I think it's a mentality, I do I think it is how, the way you approach training for the months out of a fight every, every time I went to the gym I was trying to win everything I was trying to win my pad sessions I was trying to win my matches my, my rolls, my rounds my spars, everything, everything I wanted to win. I wanted to turn into a dogfight. I wanted to, yeah, give everything I had. And I, I, I do think that bleeds over. Is that just something like the Drake's fight almost can happen and reignite your passion for the sport and passion for training? Whereas if you've been doing it and successful for so long, you can almost go up and go to work as opposed to going there yeah. and try and win. Mate, complacency is a toxin. You know, it creeps up on you. You don't realize it's there until it is. And... As much as I, I hate the way it happened, it was kind of a kick up the ass I needed, right? <laughs>